Good morning, class. My name is Pam Turner, and I will be the moderator for this morning's lecture. Welcome to another lecture presented by the Tampa class. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the president of our school, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize Himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laden in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This evening or this morning we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Darlene Webster and our scripture which will be 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter. Oh, second chapter, sorry. Okay, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. Our readers are Dr. Sherry Williams and Dr. Darlene Webster. And um, we will also have a selection by the Tampa Choir. Good morning, class. Good morning. May we all just bow in our hearts and our minds, and we just need to take a moment and slow down and just thank Yahweh for all that He has given us, all that He has shown us, and is still showing us every day. And we are, we are so grateful. For, for that and for him allowing us to even have an, any understanding of him at all. We are so, we're just all praises, all praises and glory unto him. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Chuck, can you stand with John? Because you're going to say something. I don't know. She might bite. She might. Yeah. She might deserve it. Beautiful. I just tuned this, but there's a, maybe there's something going on with my tuner. Oh, yeah. 
Morning. Morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of the Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. 
for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he, as the Almighty, sitteth in the temple of Yahweh, showing himself that he is the Mighty One. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now restraineth will restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahshua shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be judged who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh for you, brethren beloved of him, because he hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our evangel to the obtaining of the glory of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah himself, and Yahweh, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. That was Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. everyone I'd like to remind you to silence all electronic devices if you haven't already and I do want to acknowledge we have some visiting brethren with us um, from the Green Bay Wisconsin ranch doctors Gail and Mike Josephson we're so happy to have you with us again and I also like to acknowledge our returning visitor um, Abby Peterson welcome Thanks, and for our first speaker I would like to call on dr. Lisa Zizi Go like in, in a pocket or yeah. belt. Thank you. <sighs> you get your name called. Yeah. You know, we all, most of us feel a little nervous because we are humans about to talk to you all in the, the world about God and about Yahweh and what we've learned here. So we're all, we're all just doing with what we've been given. So these, um, The scripture is, uh, I'm just going to, you know, start off the class. So we'll start off at, start off at one, please. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him. Okay, just just going to go through each verse a little bit. Um, Paul wrote this. He wrote many of the books in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, I was raised Catholic. Did never read the Bible. Didn't know didn't know anything about it. Um, so then I went come into this class when I was 21 years old. It was a couple of years ago. Let's just say that. <laughs> you know, and uh, met some of these people. And um, just a short story. I was a waitress. And they would come in after the class at night, and they would eat hamburgers, sometimes have adult beverages, whatever. And they would talk about God and just talk, and like just in this group of table, and they're talking. And I'm like over there with the servers, and I'm like, 
who are those guys? <laughs> and they're like, they were calling them the church people. And uh, like, what? What do you mean? And you know, they were like, mm, you know, we're not interested. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? And so I'd serve them, and they were nice, and they were good. And then they came in once, uh, a couple times to the restaurant I was working at. They would eat their hamburgers. They all, the, a group of guys, Chuck, rode motorcycles, you know, Dennis and Mel and, and, and Joel, you know, had a motorcycle. Then they'd play cards and eat hamburgers. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. And then uh, they weren't going to come in anymore on the night that I was serving. And, and they said, well, I'm not going to see you guys. And they said, well, we're having classes at the college. And I had just dropped out of school at the college. And they said, why don't you come down there? And so I did and, you know, and saw this and just kept coming since then. So I'm just saying there's all kinds of stories that we have to come in here. But I never taught anything about the Bible. You know, went to Catholic school in grade school and we you know we got the good news for modern man which was the new testament and psalms we read that and didn't really understand what was going on i was i was went to communion um you know and and just all all these things that were part of it didn't understand anything about what was going on you know when i came here i saw that that you know there was a, at least a picture of you know what i thought was was jesus on the cross i'm like well there's some, something going on here that i'm used to but what we come to realize is that there is right before our eyes there's a pattern there's all the patterns that are consistent in the universe are a reason and they're put there by the Creator and so he, he is bringing us here you know me following the church people into this class and then he sits you down and you're just you're just a, a buzz with your mind and he's calms your mind and he in the same way that the Sun shines on on a seed in the ground and the water waters that seed it takes that seed and changes it into an into a plant the seed doesn't look anything like the plant. I'm just saying that's what's happening to you. And if you're still sitting here, that is an amazing, beautiful thing. And please just do your best to fight whatever I was in the world to get here. So I'm saying all that. So in the scriptures, whereas now we, this is Paul, and he's saying, and read about Paul and Acts, you know, you know, if you can. It's an interesting story. He was, he was zealously thinking he was doing the right thing and he was persecuting the Yashwans at that time and then Yashua you know set him straight and and brought him into this gospel but his whole background you know he had to go preach to all his all the Jews about this background where he was killing everyone but Yashua chose him to show that it wasn't Paul's knowledge it's not my knowledge anybody that speaks in here it's not us we are just humbly trying to impart what we've learned. So, Paul, we beseech you, brethren, mm -hmm. by, by the coming yep. of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, and by our gathering together unto him. We gather, because Yahshua is preaching the gospel on this floor, and I'm doing my best to do what I can, and if you learn anything, it's because he taught it to you. We're just the TV. Okay? The Sony, you don't look at your Sony and like, oh, that Sony is smart, you know. It's just the signal coming through it. So we beseech you, we're gathering together. Keep going. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Yahweh, of Yahshua, is at hand. So this, I don't know, there's a few people shaken these days in this world and frankly us m many of us depending on what your situation we are all going through our own specific situation but Yahshua has got you he's got you you're here so don't be soon shaken in mind which is really where most of it is or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word and you're like oh yeah well I'm pretty shaken and I don't know what to do about it well you're here so just do your best to breathe calm down and let's watch Yahshua work in your life so keep going let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So, I think we all know that, that, you could, that there are people out here that are trying to deceive you in general. This just physically, they're trying to deceive you. Um, 
you know, I just saw a thing, you know, the whole thing with the um, artificial intelligence is a whole another lecture that I, you know, I hope somebody gets into. But when you look at the attributes, so Yahweh is attributes, and there's scriptures like, let's just quick get the spirit, I think it's in Isaiah, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, Isaiah, um, I forget what it is, but, you know, the spirit of Yahweh was put in the people, okay, if you can get that. So, there's other lectures we'll talk about it. Wisdom, intelligence, intelligence, wisdom and knowledge, beauty, love and justice, foundation, power and strength. Those are nine attributes. Similarly, that there's nine systems in the body. Similarly, there's nine planets in the universe. You know, these are all future lectures that will show patterns. It's not an accident that these are floating around in the universe. And the, or nor that they have nine systems in our body. And then these are just like the main attributes. Of course, there's a break off of those. But what I'm saying is um, artificial intelligence is like Yahweh is intelligence. So artificial intelligence is fake intelligence. And that's really going to take over the world and do crazy things. You can have a video of someone who takes, you know, my voice and my face and then put it out on the, the interwebs and it could, someone would think that I'm saying it. So there's, they're deceiving you that way with marketing. You know, you see some commercial, somebody's dancing around because they have kidney disease and they're all happy about it. They're trying to sell you a drug. I, that's annoying. That why the drug company is selling me a drug when my doctor is supposed to tell me? Physically, they're deceiving you. But that's just a witness because we're all in the world not realizing that Yahweh is in control and running the show and he has a purpose. So we're trying to tell you that. So there is something going on behind the scenes. So... And we're going to need Revelation 2. Um, so let no man deceive you. Okay, so do we have the Spirit? 11. Thank you, thank you. Isaiah, Isaiah 11, 2. Isaiah 11, 2. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Isaiah 11, 2. This is just an example of some of the attributes that Yahweh is made of. Yeah. Okay, I, I have it. I say that you love it too. <laughs> and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. And the spirit of Yahweh, well, what's that? What is spirit? Spirit is God. God is spirit. What, this is the first time I came here to realize the spirit of Yahweh is attributes. And in John, in John 4, 24, we have to worship him in spirit. So keep, keep going. The spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon you. But what is it? The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of wisdom. This is one of the attributes. And of understanding. Keep going. The spirit of counsel and might. Spirit of counsel and might, which is foundation and justice counsel. And might. Yep. Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. Wisdom, intelligence, knowledge. That's the spirit. That's Yahweh and the fear of Yahweh. And this is when, is this when he was making the tabernacle? Well, there was different points where he put his spirit in men to get it done, to get it done right. Like for example, when they made the tabernacle in the wilderness of Sinai, he put his spirit in them to make it. It's just not going to be done with a group of people trying to do something together because it just doesn't happen. I think we've all experienced that. You know, you try to get a team together, even at work. Oh, no, I, we need to do it like that. Oh, no, we need to do it. Finally, we have to pick one person, like, we're going to do it that way, and that's how we're going to do it. So Yahweh put his spirit in men to get this tabernacle made. He put it in here. So spirit. So my point was just that intelligence is Yahweh. Artificial intelligence is not Yahweh. It's not the truth. It's, it's not the truth. So, let no man deceive you. We're in three. By any means. So people are trying to deceive you. And besides people, the mystery of iniquity is real. And it's not the devil. I don't even know what I, don't even know what I thought before I came into class what the devil was. I wasn't even sure. You know, you see the movies. Movies. It's a movie. That's a clue right there. It's a movie. It's just somebody's theory and it's entertainment and all that. So where do you get real information? I'm telling you, as strange as it may seem, the real truth is right here and Yahweh brought you here. It's not what you think, but it's, you're, you're lucky enough to sit here and listen to it, whether it's online or whether it's in person. So keep going, Sherry. 
2 um, Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, <clears throat> for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So this is just talking. When we have, you know, boy, there's just so many new things that we have to share with everyone. But there is, you know, along with learning that there's a pattern, that Yahweh has a purpose and he has an organized fashion of doing it, he also did everything in a, in a way so that the where we are now in time is just one part of one whole story. And this chart talks about it a bit. And so when you look at it, just look at it, this is chronology. The purpose manifested through dispensations and ages or through ages and dispensations. So that this is time. There is a point, there, eternity is not time. We're, we're, we're in time right now. This cross shows when Yahshua came in, okay? Before Yahshua, there was the post diluvian age, which the Noah and the flood is here, we all heard about that. Before the flood, that's the antediluvian age, before the flood, after the flood. And then even before that was the Garden of Eden, and then there was the angelic creation and the physical creation. And I feel like I'm just set up like six things that are like, what? But that's another lecture. So now in t there, there is a time when this plan, this purpose will end and then another one will happen. Oh yeah? Well, yes, that's another lecture too. But I'm trying to say that when we, like it says in this verse, at the, at the end, at the end of what? And you don't have to be worried because at the, at the end just means there's a new beginning of something. We don't know what it is. You might be nervous about it. But some, when something ends, there's a new beginning. And that's what even Yahshua, I mean, when he died, he resurrected. And that's what we're supposed to remember. He is the resurrection. So hold on to that. So this is the end. We're getting to the end of this purpose. But look, there's even, you know, more after. So don't be too stressed out. Because you could, you know, your end could come any minute. So, you know, whether it's the end of the creation or your end, you're still within the time to learn something about Yahweh. So, this is like 33 AD, well, and then the time just as basic, like we're talking about when Yahshua started. So then we're counting, we're in 2023 right now. When you're looking at that much time, it is towards the end. It's not the beginning. It's towards the end. I'm not saying it's tomorrow. I don't know. We don't know when the end is coming. You don't know when your end is coming. But there shall come a falling away first. In this class, even if we look at it, you know, we've all, some of us have been here a long time. There was more people in it. There was different. It was different. But all is okay because Yahshua, this is exactly how he's planning it. So there shall come a falling away first. So even if our class is a little smaller than it used to be, we're all hanging on by the skin of our teeth. And in the end, he's hanging on to you. You think, I just feel like I'm just one every day. I'm like, I have, I'm stressing out or whatever I got going on or you, what you have going on. Just calm, breathe. Your breath is Yahweh's name. Yah, and then Way. So breathe that, calm your heart down and trust him. So there shall come a falling away first and that son, man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This is where we're talking about the mystery of iniquity. And it's so, he's powerful. He's incredibly smart, very much smarter than any of us. We don't have a chance, so keep going. But we do have a chance because when we're, in, when we're clothed in Yahshua, when we are in him, you're fine. Four. So, go for it. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim. Okay, so he's pride itself. Mm -hmm. He's not any of these. Oh, oh, to be clear, he might be intelligent, but without the love. The mystery of iniquity... It puts, tries to put himself, thinks he's above, exalts himself above all that is called Yahweh. That's the mystery of iniquity. So keep going. Or that is worshipped so that he, as the Almighty, 
sitteth in the temple of Yash Yahweh, showing himself that he is the mighty one. Showing himself that he is the mighty one. There's, this is a full lecture, and I'm just going to try to do my best to start it. So um, let's get, um, so who's, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Yahweh. Anybody who's got the nerve to do that is just, they don't know. The, those of us who have been, had something revealed, we just hang our head and are humbled and are grateful to be here at all. And those who are, I don't know him. You know, look at Pharaoh. I don't know who's Yahweh. I don't know him. I got, you know, it's like if your dad comes out in the schoolyard and starts to, you know, you're like, yeah, that's my dad. This is how it is in, in the spirit. You got Yahshua. He has you. You're good. But the mystery of iniquity opposes and exalts above Yahweh, or that is worshipped. So let's go to Revelation, uh, is it 12? Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle, no, 6, 5, 7, something like that. Revelation. That's why we have readers that help and, us. And 6. Um, let's start at 7. At 7, Please, okay. thank you. So Revelation, hmm, this book, just to, as a tip, as a tip with Revelation, mm -hmm. This, is, this chart's amazing, because we get it all the time. A lot going on in this chart, but just, just look at this part of it. So when we talk about Moses all the time, and back with Moses, Mount Sinai, and you know there was a people at the base, 70 elders and, th and Adab, Aaron, Adab, and Abihu went to the mid part, and only Moses went to the top with Joshua, but that's another lecture too. He had a vision. And it's not an accident that John was on an island, which is a mountain. He had a panoramic vision of Elohim. He was looking at the same vision that Moses was from a different angle. In the same way, like, if you look at me from the back, you know, you're going to see a different thing than you, somebody who looks at the front. Oh, I see glasses. Well, there's no glasses. But it's a different angle. It's a different perspective. That's what Revelation is. Now you go, right. oh, <laughs> That's another lecture too. I can't get into all of it, but this is what he's talking about now. So, so then, you know, John is saying, okay, we're talking about there was a war in heaven. And so that's back here. There was a war in heaven back before the Garden of Eden. Keep going. Yes. Did you want it in King James or Holy Name? Um, you can read it with the names. You know, we, we, a lot of us use King James Version Bibles because it's the closest interpretation of what was written in Hebrew. There's a lot of these thou's and thou arts, which is a little bit of a struggle, but the definitions and the way it was worded is closer. That's why we use that. We also use the Holy Name Bible. We go back and forth between the two, but we all know that anytime you see Lord, we just read Yahweh. You see it, but that we just say Yahweh. So go ahead. Okay, this is our... Um in holy name, and it is Revelations 12 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder. Let's start at 7, because I don't think I can get into all that. So he, what she's starting is there's a, there's a wonder in heaven, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, when the mystery of iniquity, I just don't know if I can say all that, because it talks about mm -hmm. um, the woman about to give birth. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about this before, and I don't want to, sh you know, it's almost like you, the first, first speaker is trying to say something, and then the rest of the speakers say it, but we'll get into this another day, but the woman is the us. Woman. Yes. Yahweh's the man. Mm -hmm. We're the woman, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And we're about to give birth to the Holy Spirit, and the, the, the Mr. Iniquity wants to, like, devour it. He doesn't, but he wants to. Yes. So we're just going to drop down to seven. Go okay. ahead. Seven. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Let's go seven. This is it's seven. different in the whole... Okay. Oh, it is. It's I got you. Okay, I have. Oh, that's... Well, I don't know. No, I, I'll read it. Okay. In Thank you. I didn't James. know that. And the war broke out in heaven. No. And there was war in heaven. <laughs> Thank Michael you. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. So this is a spiritual war in heaven, the angelic creation there. The Michael and his angels fought, and the dragon fought. Keep going. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So the dragon... The, you know, and, and when we read the moderation, you know, the devil, the dragon, and his demons, that's all the mystery of iniquity. Their place wasn't found anywhere. They got kicked out of heaven. 
And guess where they went? They came here. Mm -hmm. And they're all in people, in vessels. And uh, probably a few more in, in, in vessels. Mm -hmm. You can't see. You can't see it. Somebody can wear a suit. Your clothes. Somebody, somebody can wear, you know, landscaping clothes and look, you know, dirty. That's not how you judge. When they open their mouth, that's how you judge. That's how you can be deceived by what people say. They're kicked out. So keep going. And the great dragon was cast out. That old mm -hmm. serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Because that's mm -hmm. hard to accept if you, if you really think about it. But the, the, the mystery of iniquity deceives the entire world, including you. <laughs> including me. Now I'm, you know, I, even though I never read the Bible, I know stuff. You know, be careful. Don't exalt yourself above everything that is Yahweh. <laughs> so, you know, so this is what this is what we're getting back to in Thessalonians. Then, in, in, in that when we're talking about the mystery of iniquity, he he um, who opposes and he he's he sits in the temple showing himself that he is Yahweh. So he's he deceived everybody, and then the process now is that Yahweh through Yahshua is enlightening us to bring us back to him that's what's happening keep going in revelation and, uh, no i think we're done there um so to yeah. the whole world he was cast out into the, the earth, earth and yep. his angels were cast out with him. right so that's all i want in revelation you know we'll get into more of that another day so then that that there's something going on that you don't know and that's what we're trying to say but if you stick tight to what you know about yashua what you're learning you don't have to worry about the mystery of Daphne, but he is strong. He can draw you away with the, the most subtle. And then let's just get it briefly in Genesis about the mystery of iniquity, and then I'll just you know try to sit down and let the next speaker. So let's let's read a little bit more in Second Thessalonians, and then we'll get Genesis about the uh, serpent. Read a little more in, um, in Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians two and five. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Paul kept talking to them over and over. Many books, go ahead. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay, so he's being revealed to us. If you want to know. And Yahshua puts the will to know in you. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. And he's been working since the beginning of time. So I'll just get a little bit more in Genesis. And then there's actually more in the prophets. Where he worked his way all the way through this, the, the whole. Oh, here. We're in the Garden of Eden. And he worked his way through all this book. And he's still here now. So we just need to know in the same way that you want to know your enemy, in the same way that you want to know the competition, so that you know how, to, how they're going to come at you, or how, you know, what are they going to look like. That's what we do in life physically to understand, you know, how, how, to, how, to, um, how to resist or put up a hand, just how, what, if he's not a guy in a red outfit with horns, then what is he? So let's go to Genesis and just see where he came in and deceived, you know, Adam and Eve. And then I'll sit down and let hopefully, you know, someone can carry it on. Because then, then that's in the beginning. And then now here he's talking about he's being revealed now. So let's get Genesis. Was it three, two? Three, one, two, one. And now the... No, Genesis where he deceived. Got it. Three. Three, one? Three and one. Right? Yeah. Okay. Three and one. Genesis three, one. Genesis three and one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. So now it's starting off right away with the serpent, you know, Catholic girl. I don't know what's going on here either at all. But this is the point where when you, when you like in, in, in life, we often use attributes 
you know, in, in, this, in the same way that actually, you know, it was another whole story, but when Yahshua was called the Lamb, I hate pointing at this because he really, he's no longer, he died, but when Yahshua was called the Lamb, John said, oh, it was the Lamb of Yahweh. What does that mean? Well, there was a Lamb back here, but he also was, he was, he didn't say a word when he was put on the cross. I find no fault with him. He didn't defend himself at all. Um, so the serpent, a serpent is subtle. A serpent, you know, well, um, snakes are not the devil. We're just talking about attributes. Serpent is subtle and will, will sneak up. So the serpent was more subtle. So some guy in a red outfit is not going to come up to me with horns, but some guy could come on and say, why are you going to that class? You know, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's not many people there. There's a lot more people in, you know, your Catholic religion. And so I'm like, what? And so this is what happened to Eve. So keep going. And he said unto the woman, Have Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And this is the whole story, and there's so much to be said. We try to edit and yet explain, because it's really encouraged to read this book, go home. As soon as you're done with class, go and read the chapters that we get, because you can get the full story. Before this, you know, Yahweh made the garden. He put Adam in the garden. Adam needed a help, you know, fit for him. And he got Eve, which Eve, which is another important point. He didn't create Eve. Eve came out of Adam. Eve was in Adam. And then Yahweh took her out of him. And that's what we're trying, that's Eve's going back in. But Yahweh told Adam, don't touch this one tree. One law. <laughs> you know, it's pretty much as in your own world, if you'll notice, if, as soon as you say, I'm never going to do this, just watch yourself, because it'll happen probably 10 minutes after that or you know, a week later. Mm -hmm. So one thing they just couldn't do, the one thing, don't touch this tree. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, earlier. And so then Adam told Eve, Eve, so the serpent said, did Yahweh say not to touch this? Well, how do you know? Well, he, he was there. And, and he wasn't a snake, that's the thing. And then we can, somebody will get that later, but he was a beautiful creature, got her attention. Like Cynthia always says, there's a snake talking to me, I'm running the other direction. You know what I'm saying? Nasty, you know? It's so, but the serpent was subtle. Did he say not to eat it? And what did she say? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. We can eat over a million trees. <laughs> but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So this one, I swear, you know, I, I did not have kids, but I know I, I have family, you know, I've, you know, I'm always, I've, now I'm a mentor to every child in my circle, so be careful, I will be a mentor to your child. <laughs> but um, I babysit, you know, and as soon as you point out, don't eat that, almost like I just zeroed them in on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that, with that mentality they have, like, oh, that's the one I want. Yeah. If I went to said anything, they would have not, you know, do to do yeah. like, yeah. I, you know, la, 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 they don't know. <laughs> Thank you. So, so <laughs> this one don't eat. And then keep reading. And the serpent said unto the woman, No death will ye, will you die? So, oh, really? So the one thing that Yahweh told him, if you eat this one, you're going to die. Death is a whole conversation too. So um, can you, I can read it out of King James. Yes. Just, yes. She, um, yeah. Four. And the serpent mm -hmm. said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So, Mm -hmm. you're not, you're not going to die mm -hmm. so now who are you going to believe mm -hmm. who, that's mm -hmm. the, the bottom line for everything now keep going mm -hmm. for your Elohim doth know that in the day he eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods the, knowing good and evil the creator right the, the creator of everything, of course, Adam was, you know, new, but we are here now looking at these stories to understand something. The creator says something. And now, the beautiful creature, oh no, you're not going to die. This is what's going to, you're going to have your eyes opened. 
Oh yeah, so here's me looking at, you know, the little kid looking at, oh, that's, you know, and that, with that mind, with the mind that we have without Yahshua, we're just going to be led away. Shiny object. Squirrel, you're just, you're, you can't focus. So we, and, and so then, she ate it. That was the purpose though. It's not like you got to be mad at Adam. And that's a whole story in itself. So I'm just going to leave it there because what happened was that was purposed and you know, we could, there's more lectures to get because that's what drove them out of the garden. And so because Adam went with her, she, she took it, she ate it, she gave it to him and he, yes. he went with her. Mm -hmm. And then that tells a whole story. And then, and then it comes where Yahshua, I mean, I'm kind of in a nutshell here. He forgives all of that so, I don't want to say too much more than that because somebody else can get into it. But this is so interesting and so amazing if you just give it a chance. Yeah. And if you don't get it, I had somebody come and they're like, oh, yeah, my brain is on. I'm like, just, okay, just, just zero in on one thing. That's just right. look at one thing. Call somebody if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Come as much as you can because there's so much to learn. And it's like... You know, there's just no end to it. It'll be interesting the rest of your life. Um, and we are all here to help you and help each other get through it because there's a lot of distractions out there and the mystery of iniquity is strong. He's going to just pull you away with the slightest thing. I can't go because I can't go to that class because I have to whatever. And I say to myself all the time, what do I have to do that's more important than God talking to me? What do I got? Are you kidding me? No. If you're sick, you know, we don't run, you know, probably shouldn't come and all that because we're into COVID and all that. But, you know, there's, there's much to learn. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And our next speaker will be Dr. Miguel Sufana. Still morning. Good morning to the class. Good morning. Um, I'm always happy to be here and to testify of this vision uh, that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And he didn't only receive just a vision, he received a divine vision. Divine meaning from, directly from the Creator. And he also, with that vision, because many people have visions, we have visions all the time. But what he see, received with that vision, and when after he had the vision, he said, he, he, he couldn't understand after he had the vision. And it wasn't until he received the divine revelation of what he saw in the vision, which means he saw, received the understanding of what he saw, that's when he understood. Now he had to receive a divine vision and a divine revelation. Now, the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit through prophets. Get 1 Peter. Um, now, see, I was, I was raised in this school. So I, I don't have the, the background stories of going to church and believing in the Lord and all that stuff. I was raised with Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. But my parents did a good job of allowing me to go to church if I sleep over a friend's house. Yeah, go, go to church with the, go to a synagogue. You know, we lived in a, a big Jewish community. Go to a synagogue with your friends. I had Muslim friends. Go to a mosque. You know, check, they encouraged me to check everything out. It wasn't just come to class, come to class, come, come to class, believe in this. They encouraged me to check every single thing out. Mm -hmm. And I've and I, I, I just about covered all religions, Buddhism, Taoism, uh, the philosophies that the philosophers came up with, the sciences, mm -hmm. all of it. You have to check it all out because how do you know what you're believing is true if you don't check out everything? And that's why we don't hold you hostage down here. We tell you, go check out everything. Thing. Mm -hmm. Hold their feet to the fire. See what they're if they're teaching is true. And that's what we go about in this school to prove all things. And that's in the Bible. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. And if we can't prove it until your satisfaction, you're not obligated to believe it. Now that's fair. 
You're not, you, you have to have evidence. You have to have proof. You would never go to a court hearing and have no evidence and say, hey, just believe me, judge. <laughs> now, from a natural standpoint, that would be stupidity. You have to have the proof and you have to have the evidence. And what separates us, because there's many people that use Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And people will say, well, you, you know, the only difference between you guys and church is you guys just teach by the different names. No, that's not the only difference. <laughs> Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, this has become common in the world. When our founder first had the vision, see, the Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua wasn't common. <laughs> It became, now in the world, you, you can go to churches, they'll interchange Yahweh and the Lord, they'll interchange Yahweh and God, they'll interchange, mm -hmm. they'll say Yashua, Yeshua mm -hmm. instead of Yahshua, but right. we know he okay. come in his father's name, right. so it couldn't be Yeshua, it has to be Yahshua. And if the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. Obadiah, they come, if they come in the father's name, why would he be anything different? And he's the savior. So this is not the only difference, but what really Differ, di differentiates us from us in the world is that we teach by this pattern That's right. and I hope to get into this pattern before I sit down this is what distinguishes us between us and the world can we get um, do you guys have the textbook yeah volume four mm -hmm. does anyone have a textbook to share I think it maybe share with uh, Abby. I want volume four. Okay. Um, let me just see. It's the beginning of volume four. Well, Dr. Stanley statement or mm -hmm. about has it ever occurred to you? Or no? start here. The bottom of page one in volume four Okay. It's the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Introduction. Now, now, I'll say this. This is a school and not a church. We don't come down here to worship Yahweh. We come down here to learn how to worship Yahweh. And Yahweh, we have that scripture read all the time, Yahweh is spirit. Us being physical beings, since Yahweh is spirit, He desires for us to worship Him in spirit, and not only in spirit, but also in truth. We want to know the truth of the matter. And now this is a textbook, since this is a school, and don't you, when you go to a natural school, don't you have textbooks, whether it's your, your math textbooks, your finance textbook, your science textbook, you have textbooks. So our founder, he wrote a textbook that explains what's in the Bible. Right. Okay. Let me take advantage of this opportunity to tell you, uh -huh. the reader, mm -hmm. that both you and I have justifiable reasons to firmly believe that there are millions of people throughout the world in every so-called religious faith, denomination, or church organization known to mankind on the face of the earth, regardless of name, doctrine or philosophy who are not thoroughly satisfied in heart or mind with his or her present understanding and knowledge of Yahweh. Now they're not satisfied. Why are they not satisfied? Because they haven't been given the proof. They've been going off of blind faith. Just believe me because I said just believe it because it's in the Bible. Well how do we know the Bible is true? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to ask yourself some tough questions. How do we know that the Bible is real? How do we know this isn't a made-up book just telling fairy tales? How do we know that? Continue reading. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, they have accepted the idea of an existing deity of some sort or kind, mm -hmm. according to what they have been taught. Why? Because they have nothing definite, abstract, or concrete. Now, they have. listen to these words. They have nothing definite abstract or concrete that's solid mm -hmm. 
read upon which to base mm -hmm. their religious concept now they have nothing solid to base their religious concepts off of they're reading the bible with no type of understanding and he's going to get to the, the he's going to get to the the the, 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 the differ i can't speak to that the differentiator <laughs> yeah. between us and, and the churches read except what they have been taught to sound believe. like moses moses was a stutterer and that's what i was just doing <laughs> just stuttering read except what they have been taught to believe uh-huh or their own personal convictions to try and prove to themselves mm -hmm. or anyone else as to that matter right that their idea or concept of Yahweh is neither true or false it's neither true or false now you ask these people questions oh they say you believe in Jesus died on the cross well prove that Jesus died on the cross well it's in the Bible how do you want to know that's true? Mm -hmm. There's other books. There's the Quran. There's the, the Kabbalah. There's all these other books. How do we know that this one's true? Read. They have not learned of Yahweh and mm -hmm. his purpose by a definite Yahweh given now pattern. They, they have not learned of Yahweh and his purpose by a definite Yahweh given pattern. Mm -hmm. Read. What do I mean by this statement? Uh huh. Well, out of my 40 years of personal experience now he's had 40 years of personal experience and I've all my life have been doing research on other organizations and I have the same testimony that he's about to give out of his 40 years of his personal experience plus uh -huh. intensified mm -hmm. and inexhaustible uh -huh. scientific and phil philosophical research or since Yahweh showed me the divine di vision mm -hmm. with the revealed interpretation of its meaning, mm -hmm. I have not <coughs> found one so-called religious faith. Now he says, I have not found one so-called religious faith, and I haven't either. That fully realizes mm -hmm. that Yahweh Elohim is a universal spirit pattern. Uh-huh. Now he's a universal spirit pattern. You see up here we have Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. He's the universal spirit pattern in which we talk about how Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, they saw the Elohim of Israel and he transfigured or transformed into this threefold intangible sanctuary because he's showing that this is a definition of physical because it takes the natural to understand the spiritual which we can get to mm -hmm. but it takes this this uh, physical pattern to show forth the spiritual pattern now he's a spirit pattern read with an immutable spirit law embodied within himself now immutable he's not changeable mm -hmm. spirit law embodied within himself read by which mm -hmm. he established the perfection mm -hmm. of the operation of his revealed eternal purpose now he establishes the perfection of his operation and his revealed eternal this whole pattern demonstrates the purpose of Yahweh you see we have here chart on pattern mm -hmm. or plan the pattern or plan one in the same mm -hmm. of salvation and you see here on this chart we call it the elementary chart because it's it's basic in its in its uh, concepts that it's trying to relate to you so you see have all we have all these different biblical events and we have them in a threefold layout we have Adam and Eve or the, the identic transgression plate you have this threefold them in the garden them being driven Adam being driven out of the garden and then you have them down here in the court roundabout most holy place holy place court roundabout this pattern is one two three then you have the next plate you have the noahic and the, he makes a covenant he gives Noah a vision about it's going to rain you have one two three or most holy place holy place court roundabout <coughs> and you have the children of israel coming up out of egypt you have them down in Egypt, then you have them in the wilderness of Sinai, which would be correlated to the holy place. Then you have them in Canaan land, which would be correlated with the most holy place. Now, we've laid out these events according to a pattern. And you will find out that he, although the events are changing, this is, this is a different event than this event that occurred. The principles that are in each event remain the same. Continue reading. Or in other words, Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. Uh-huh. This same universal spirit pattern. Now, Yahweh declared the end from, this is why he's yes. different than any other God. Yes. Any other God that you can think of. He declared the end from the beginning. That means he knows all things. Yes. 
knows everything that is going to happen. Read. This same universal spirit pattern mm -hmm. with the spirit law embodied therein uh -huh. was revealed to Moses. Now this pattern was revealed to Moses. See, these charts that are driven, it's the vision in pictorial form. And the vision that, that Dr. Kinley received, it is directly in line with what's written in the Bible. Nothing different. It explains what's written in the Bible. So we have the vision. It was first given to Moses. Continue reading. The prophets. The prophets. And apostles. Uh-huh. By his spirit. By his spirit. Which is sufficient to mm -hmm. reconcile the world. Now this pattern is sufficient to reconcile the world. To the one and only true Yahweh. To, mm -hmm. And the one and only true way to universal truth. Now there's only one truth. Mm. Now that's just the reality. There's only one truth. Well, how do we know that? Wasn't there only one door in this ark? There was only one way that they got through the, 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 to the wilderness of Sinai, the Red Sea. In this pattern, there's only one way to get into the holy place. Just like there's one door in the ark. Only one way. And then that's why Yahshua, since he's what he's doing, his mission is to fulfill everything in the scriptures or from Genesis to Malachi. He's fulfilling. So why does he come in? He says, I am the door because we have a door here in the pattern. And then he also says, I am the way, am the way. Mm -hmm. not ways, plural. He says, I am the way, the truth, not truth and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. Singular. He's the only way. That's why there's only one door in the pattern. There's only one way unto salvation. Can you get 1 Peter um, 1 and 21? And then can you get Acts... Um, 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1. And then can you get Acts the 17th chapter? And maybe start around 10. Okay, you want 2 Peter? Mm-hmm. And... Where did you want me to start there? One and twenty-one. One and, and twenty-one. 20. Or twenty. One and twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Knowing this first. Now we we must know this first. Read that no prophecy of script of scripture uh -huh. is of any private interpretation. Now no prophecy of scriptures of any private interpretation. That means. I can't just go in the Bible. Lisa can't just go in the Bible. Darlene or anybody in here, we can't just go in the Bible and try and read it and get an understanding because it's not of any private interpretation. I can't interpret it myself because that's why you have all these different religions. Everyone's going in and trying to read the Bible, figure it out. And this person says, oh, you have to be water baptized this way. You have to be dunked in the river. This person says you got to be baptized babies. This person says you got to be sprinkled with water. We all have these all different interpretations. That's because they they aren't going by the pattern, and they don't have the spirit that wrote the, the Bible. Continue reading. Yes. For prophecy mm -hmm. never came by the will of man. Now, this Bible, it wasn't written by the will of man. Mm -hmm. But holy men of Yahweh. Uh-huh spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, holy men of Yahweh, they spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, Moses, see, he was moved by the Holy Spirit. He, he had, he was born actually with the Holy Spirit, and he wrote. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where what Moses and Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, whatever they wrote down, they didn't even understand the things that they wrote. Yes. They didn't understand it because it was the Holy Spirit in them writing. It wasn't Moses' own understanding. It wasn't Jeremiah's own understanding. It was the Spirit in them that wrote the Bible. And that's why the only person that can tell you about Yahweh is Yahweh himself. Yes. It has to be that way. Because the only person that can tell you about me and my deepest, darkest secrets, the only thing, I, I, I'm, I have to tell it to you. That's right. <laughs> You're not just going to look at me and say, oh, look, Miguel did all this and that and that. I, and, until I tell it to you, I have to reveal it unto you. But that's the same thing with Yahweh. That's how we talk. She, Lisa talked about the mystery of iniquity. But Yahweh is also of mystery. He's the mystery of Yahweh. So now you're dealing with both of these mysteries and both of the mysteries have to be revealed or they have to be shown unto you. Mm -hmm. That's why you, it says in Revelation what we read, the whole world was deceived. We were all deceived. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. We didn't understand who Yahweh was or what his purpose was. He had to show it unto us. And then when you come down here, see the churches, they scared to talk about the devil. Because what they're doing in the churches, it points the devil out. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
They don't know because what they're what they're preaching and what they're practicing isn't in, written in the Bible. And they'll swear it swear it is. Roman Catholics, they don't even use the Bible, unfortunately. Right. They use the catechism. Mm -hmm. Now I want Acts the, the 17th chapter, maybe start around 10. Acts 17 mm -hmm. and 10. Um, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto mm -hmm. Berea mm -hmm. who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews uh -huh. these were more noble than those in Thessalonica mm -hmm. in that they received the word with all readiness of mind now Paul he was a well learned man he was brought up under the foot of Gamaliel and so he knew the scriptures front and back so what happened to him that he all of a sudden changed his understanding. What happened to him? That he changed so and, and believed differently. Paul just had the same experience that our founder had. He was caught up into the third heaven, knocked off his horse on, on the way to Damascus, and he was shown a divine vision and revelation. And that's why he's qualified to get it over to us. Continue reading. And search the scriptures daily, uh -huh. whether those things were so. Mm -hmm. Therefore, many of them believed uh -huh. also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Uh -huh. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge mm -hmm. that the word of Yahweh was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also mm -hmm. and stirred up the people. Uh -huh. Read. Then and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timothy abode there still. Read. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, mm -hmm. and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timothy for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Uh -huh. Read. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him mm -hmm. when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. The city wholly given to idolatry, mm -hmm. just worshiping of idols. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily mm -hmm. with them that met with him. Mm -hmm. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him. Now here come the smart boys, the philosophers, the Epicureans, the Stoics. Read. <laughs> and some said, what will this babbler say? Now what will this babbler say? Read. Other some he seemed to be a setter forth of strange deities. Now he seemed, now they, they're saying this to Paul. He seemed to be a setter forth of strange deities. And that's when this name Yahweh, when you start coming with this name Yahweh, they'd be like, Yah, Yahoo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yahoo? They think it's strange, the things that we're teaching. And it's it's as simple as one, two, three. Read. Because he preached unto them Yahshua and the resurrection. Now he preached unto them Yahshua and the resurrection. They thought that was strange. Continue reading. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, uh -huh. saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? Now they said to Paul, you got a new doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's what they think this is, is a new doctrine. Mm -hmm. This is the oldest thing that there is. Mm -hmm. We're teaching what was set up. Mm -hmm. From the foundation of the world. That's what we're teaching. This is not new, although it may be new to people that haven't heard it, but this is not new. We're teaching the oldest thing that there is. This name Yahweh is not new. It was given to Moses way back when. It's not new. But they just swapped it out for Lord God and Jesus Christ, and that, that was the new stuff that they gave unto us. But this is not new. Read. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. Uh huh. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Uh huh. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Mm hmm. Read. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hills hill and said ye men of Athens I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious too, they were too superstitious you know you know people are, nowadays are too superstitious you know I gotta I gotta eat lunch at the same time because if I don't I may not get this job that tomorrow you know I, I gotta I gotta show up at the same time because if I don't you know something bad may happen you know people throw the salt of it don't don't split the pole too superstitious read 
For as I passed by and mm -hmm. beheld your devotions, mm -hmm. I found an altar with this inscription uh -huh. to the unknown God. To the unknown. They had they had to make sure they covered all bases. Mm -hmm. yeah. They done covered everything because they had they had many idols. Mm -hmm. many. And if you drive, just drive down Hillsboro mm -hmm. Avenue, mm -hmm. you'll see this church, the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Then you go down a little bit further, the Tabernacle of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Then you go a little bit further. You have a Roman Catholic church. Then you got a Jewish. All these different denominations mm -hmm. teaching, teaching different things. And then if you have one Baptist church and the next Baptist church down the corner, you ask them the same question, they'll probably say two different things. Mm -hmm. It's just confusion. That's what it is. Because they, they're not going by this pattern. You see these two archangels here? They're, they are looking at Yahweh, attesting to the same thing, right? That's why we can all speak the same thing, because we're all looking at the same thing or all going by this pattern. That's why you have two eyes, and aren't they witnessing unto the same thing? Read. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, uh -huh. him declare I unto you. Uh-huh. Yahweh Elohim that made the world mm -hmm. and all things therein, mm -hmm. seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, uh -huh. dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So you tell me God don't dwell at the, the church with all the stained glass windows and, and all that stuff? Yeah, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Read. Neither is worship. Neither is he worshiped with men's hands and doing all of this. Read as though he needed anything because he doesn't need anything. You don't have to get down on your knees and and do all of this. You don't have to do all that. Read seeing he giveth to all life uh -huh. and breath and all things. Uh -huh. Read and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth mm -hmm. and hath determined the times before appointed uh -huh. Read. and the bounds of their habitation uh -huh. Read. that they should seek Yahweh if happily they might feel after him and find him that they should seek. Seek Yahweh. That's what we want to do. Seek Yahweh. Read. Though he be not far from every one of us. Now, Yahweh is not far from some of us. Well, every one. Yeah. From every one of us. That he be not far from every one of us. And that's the first aim of our school, to help you find. You got to find Yahweh. And then, before you know him, you got to find him. To help you find and know Yahweh as he really is. Now, this is the kicker, as he really is and actually exists. Not as you imagine him to be, not as Lisa imagined him to be, not as I, I imagine him to be, as he really is and actually exists. Continue reading. For, I'm sorry. He be not far from For every one, one of us, read. For in him we live. For in Yahweh. Read. We live. We live. And move. And move. And have our being. Now you can't get outside of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, we talk about how this cloud is pure spirit. Everything in the, and that we say this, everything in the chart dwells within this cloud. In like manner, everything in the entire universe dwells within Yahweh. We live, move, and have our being. Just like this air that's in this room. We're inside the air, and the air is also in us. It's the same thing with Yahweh. We live, move, and have our being right within Him. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of Him in this state, what He did was He took on a shape and form known as the Word. Now, this Word, what do we use words for? To describe or express. This is the exact expression of this sp pure spirit substance here. This is without shape and form. This is with shape and form. Now everything that is in this, this wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, and justice. See, everything that's here is here. Now it's just like if you were to fill a bathtub up with water and you grabbed a cup and you scooped a cup of the water out of the tub, everything that's in that tub is everything that's in, in the cup that you just scooped the water with. So that's no different here. So he took on this shape and form because we couldn't perceive of him in this state, and he took on this shape and form and then later walked around in a physical body amongst his creatures. That's the mystery of Yahweh that we didn't know. And that's the, that's the oneness with Yahweh, and that's his supernal nature, his ability to transmute or change into a different manifestation. And you, see, you say, well, well, I don't believe that. 
Well, we got to have we got to have a, a, another example of it. When Moses, because Moses was given a vision of this creation up here. See, he showed Moses sees Elohim. Then he sees him transform into this intangible sanctuary. And then Elohim transformed back into himself to show that Elohim is one. And, and Elohim and the pattern are one and the same. So now when Moses, when he's seeing the creation, since Yahweh is without shape and form, when he sees the creation come in, the creation comes in, it's without a discernible shape and form. It says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form. Yeah. Just like Yahweh was without form. We have to have a natural example to understand the spiritual. Yahweh was without form. So Moses first sees the earth without form and void. Right. Everything, and Dr. Kinley calls it an amalgamation of conglomeration. Everything was all jumbled up. Everything wasn't organized. The oils and the, and the, the gases and, and all those, those materials. It was all jumbled up in the earth. That's why it was chaotic here. You see it here. Same thing. It was chaotic. And then the earth, mm -hmm. it starts to take on a shape and form. Or Yahweh Elohim, he starts putting everything into place. The water's going to go here. The land's going to go here. The oil's going to go here. He's organizing it. Just like Yahweh Elohim, he's organizing these attributes into a shape and form. And then now you can start seeing, oh, that's the seas that's the land mm -hmm. you start seeing now that's that's the air but you could he couldn't tell from from the beginning and just like just like a baby coming in that substance that's secreted from the male see it's without a discernible shape and form that it's a cloudy like substance you can't look at that substance and say oh that's going to be a blonde hair blue eyed baby or that's going to that baby going to come out with black hair or that baby's going to come out and be tall you're looking at that it's without shape and form but then that baby starts to take on a shape and form right within that mother and it takes special vision to see that baby you have to have an ultrasound or something like that. You're not seeing that baby with the physical eyes. You're not seeing that baby with the physical Just like Yahweh Elohim. He has a shape and form, but you can't see it with your physical eyes. That's why he has to be revealed unto you in a vision. And it's not until this baby comes out. Now you can see it. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can handle it. And so he came down into the in a physical body, and now you can under, you can under, you can feel him. You can talk with him. Ain't that ain't that something? You can sit down and talk with your Creator. You didn't even know it. And so that that's Yahweh. The awesomeness is Yahweh to break Himself down and to come down and walk around His creatures so that we might know Him. Continue reading. For in Him we live and move and have our being uh -huh. as certain also of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring uh -huh. for as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh mm -hmm. we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver mm -hmm. or stone graven by art and man's device right and the times of this ignorance Yahweh winked at now Yahweh we winked at this ignorance read but now Commandeth all men everywhere to repent. But now he's commanding all men. What, what, what changed? What happened? Mm -hmm. Yahweh poured out his Holy Spirit. And now you can have an understanding. He poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Now you can have an understanding about Yahweh. Before that, mm -hmm. you, couldn't know any, you couldn't know anything unless he called it, had met, unless you showed it to you in a vision. And even then, Moses and them, they still didn't have a revelation to what that they were seeing. They still didn't understand. That's why he had to go preach to the captives. And then after he preached to the captives, they rose up with Yahshua. Yahshua first, and then the body. Continue reading. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Now Yahweh has appointed a day in the which he shall judge the world in righteousness. By that man. By that man, Yahshua the Messiah. Whom mm -hmm. he hath ordained. Now he's ordained Yahshua the Messiah right from the be very beginning. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. Uh-huh. In that he hath raised him from the dead. Now he has given assurance. Mm -hmm. He has given us proof unto all men that he has raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. Can we get um, 
Can we get uh, First John? It's got to be out of King James. Before you get First John, can you get John the seventeenth chapter? Okay. John 17, seventeen and one. Okay. I know I'm gonna be out of time. John seventeen uh -huh. and one. Okay. I have it. John 17 and 1. Mm -hmm. These words spake Yahshua. Now, this is, this is John 17 and 1. He says, These words spake Yahshua. This is your Savior speaking. Read. And lifted up his eyes to heaven. Now, he lifted up his eyes to heaven. That means Yahshua did this. <laughs> no. no, that's not what he did. No. Heaven is not a physical or no. geographical place to go. It's a state of mind. Yes. You don't have to see, you don't have to go nowhere. See, John, when he was knocked off his horse on the way to Damascus, he said he was caught up to the third heaven, but he was yet just on the, on the earth, just laying down on the ground. Mm -hmm. When Moses, when he's caught up into the realm of eternity, he's up here on this mountain. Mm -hmm. Heaven is not a physical or geographical place to go. It's a state of mind. So when it says Yahshua, he lifted up his eyes to heaven. It's not like he looked up. Mm -hmm. Joel talked about it the other day. If one person's on the northern hemisphere, the one person on the southern hemisphere, they look in two opposite directions. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is not above the sun, moon, moon and stars. Mm -hmm. Yahshua, he's just praying right within himself. Read. Yes. He his. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Mm -hmm. Glor glorify thy son. Now, Father, the hour is come. I'm going to have to move. Glorify thy son. This is what he's... Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. Read. That thy son also may glorify thee. Mm -hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Now, this is the Savior. He has given him, Yahshua, power over all flesh. Read. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, this is Yahshua's responsibility. Now, Yahshua, he's going to give eternal life to as many as the Father has given him. Then he goes on to describe what eternal life is. Don't we all want eternal life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we come down here for. Mm -hmm. That's why we spend our, our, our Friday, Friday nights, when you could be out doing something else on Friday. Mm -hmm. You just got done with work. Mm -hmm. You're tired, and you, you come into class. On Sundays, you could be doing something else, cleaning the house or doing all these other responsibilities to get prepared for work the next day. Mm -hmm. But we come down here, and we spend two hours down here. That's right. To get over these things. Now he says, this is like, we, that's what we, we come down here for eternal life. Eternal life. Read. And this is eter life eternal. Now he said, this is life eternal. Th he's giving you a definition of what eternal life is. Read. That they might know that thou only art the true El. That they might know. So eternal life requires some type of a knowledge. Is that right? Yes. It requires knowledge that they might know that the, read. And Yahshua, the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. That they might know thee, that thou art the only true. Remember we talked about there's only one true God. There's only one true creator. There's only one name as well. It all ties in together. That the, the only true El and Yahshua, the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life to know that. Not to know is having an intimate relationship. You can't say, I know Lisa, and I don't, I'm calling her, oh, what's your name again? Mm -hmm. You'd be like, he don't know Lisa. Mm -hmm. I say, Lisa, that's my, people say, I have, I have a, a great relationship with God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I had a great relationship with Lisa, and I'm calling her, you know, oh, that's Larry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what was your name again? Lisa. Lisa. And, and you say, you, I have a, a great relationship with Lisa, and I don't know anything about her? You know, that wouldn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we come down here to learn and know Yahweh as He really is and actually exists so that you can actually have a true relationship with Yahweh and it's not something that's outside of you. A true intimate relationship and that's Yahweh mm -hmm. communing right within you. Mm -hmm. you, you, don't have to, you don't even have to go anywhere. 
You come to class you, you, and you hear, like she said, you come to class and you hear the Holy Spirit. And that's who's the teacher down here. I don't want to hear what Miguel has to say. I don't want to hear what Lisa has to say or what anybody else has to say. It's better be the Holy Spirit teaching because that's the only one that could teach you about Yahweh. Now, can we get First John, the fifth chapter? First John five mm -hmm. and um, one. First John 5, uh, seven. you can start at okay. 7. 7. First John 5 and mm -hmm. 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Now there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And these three are one. And Let's see if that holds true. And there are three that bear record. Now we have... Sorry, one sorry, second, Sherry. Mm -hmm. Now we have... Can you get Romans 1, 19 and 20 just really quickly? Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Now we say this is one of our theme scriptures. Because this scripture is so important since we're natural, physical human beings. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. See, it's possible for you to know something about Yahweh. And Yahweh made, he took special pains to create this universe for us to know something about him. That's why he had to make it in such a specific way, according to such a specific pattern. So we can all look at it, whether you're highly educated or whether you don't know anything at all. Right. That anybody, no matter what type of education you have, can understand understand him. He has to be for everybody or he wouldn't be just. He was just for the smart people or just for the, the, the people who can't understand anything. He's, he's created a way for everybody. Because that which may uh -huh. be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Uh -huh, read. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. Now Yahweh has to show it unto you. Read. For the invisible things of him. Now since Yahweh is invisible, for the invisible things of him. From the creation of the world. Right from the creation of the world. Are clearly seen. They're clearly seen. Being understood. Now that sounds like a contradictory statement. <laughs> How can you see invisible things clearly? But he it goes on. He doesn't leave you right. just wondering. Yeah. He goes on to explain it. Being, being understood, understood read, by the things that are made. Being understood by the things that are made. Yeah. So let's take something that's made. You have something, and this is invisible as well, an atom. So you can't even see it with the microscope. It's ultra microscopic. So you can't even see it with the microscope. But it's something that was made. It's something physical that was made. And atoms are in everything. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Atoms make up everything. So you have atom, and its basic structure is a proton, a neutron, and electron. Three parts making up this one atom. And now people will say, you know, there's more parts to an atom. You know, you have the gluons and the bosons and all that other stuff. And we, we just say in its basic structure, this is a most holy place, holy place, in a court roundabout. Now there's more to it. There's vessels and all that stuff in here. There's more, there's more to it. But in its basic structure, it's threefold. In a cell, in its basic structure, it's a nucleus, a nucleolus, and a cell body. Three parts making up that one cell. And even the function, the DNA, the RNA, and the ribosomes making up that, that function of the cell. Mm -hmm. Then you go into your human body. You have your arm is made up of a hand, a forearm, and an upper arm. Three parts of that one arm. Hand, forearm, upper arm. You have your leg, you have your, your thigh, your calf, you have your foot. Mm -hmm. Three parts making up that one leg. You have your ear, is an inner ear, middle ear, and an outer ear. You have your body, it's a most holy place or a head cavity. You have the chest cavity, and you have that abdominal cavity. And you say you have all these extremities. We talked about you have the three parts to your arm. That's one, two, three. Then you have four, five, six, we include the other arm. Then you have your legs, seven, eight, nine. Then you have your other leg, 10, 11, 12. And you, your body is, know ye not that your body is the temple or the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. And so you're walking around, your extremities, they carry this body around. Yeah. And so this tabernacle, back here in the wilderness of Sinai, it had 12 tribes surrounding this tabernacle. And they had to dismantle, see the cloud, when the cloud would sit on the tabernacle, when the cloud would get up, they would have to disassemble this tabernacle and they would have to move it to wherever the cloud went. That's right. right you say, man, that is just make believe. <laughs> they just following a the cloud. I don't believe that. 
And here you are, you walk around every day just following your cloud. Oh, I gotta go, you gotta go to the bathroom. Okay, I'm going to the bathroom. Here you go, your body just taking you. I'm going to the bathroom. You following your cloud every single day. Everything stems from with your cloud. Everything. Oh, they called me to speak. I gotta get up. You following your cloud, just like they did back here. Everything is going according to this pattern. And this pattern has basic principles laid out in this pattern. Let me see if I can. Continue reading First John. First John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Uh -huh. The Father. The Father. The Word. And mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. That's why everything is threefold. Because it's the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. It's a reflection of how, he's, how his makeup is. Yeah. Read. And these three are one. Now these three are one. Not three separate. Mm -hmm. Not three separate. Mm -hmm. These three are one. Yes. It's just like, I'll say, I'll use another example. Man and its makeup is pneuma, psyche, and soma, or spirit, soul, and body, mm -hmm. right? So Lisa's sitting here, she has a spirit within her, she has a soul within her, and then she has her body, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I call Lisa, everyone, everything comes. Mm -hmm. The spirit, the soul, and the body, mm -hmm. because these three are one. Mm -hmm. It's not... You know, the spirit's over here, the soul's over here, and the body's over here. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it, these three are one. Mm -hmm. Continue reading. Mm -hmm. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Now, there are three that bear witness in the earth. We have it here on this chart. There's three that bear record in heaven, and there are three that bear witness in the earth. Read. The spirit. We have the spirit. And the water. The water. And the blood. And the blood. And these three agree in one. Now these three agree in one. You have the spirit. You have the water. And the blood. These three agree in one. Mm -hmm. And with these principles, see, you have the, these principles laid out in this pattern. You have this, this blood or you have this death on this altar here. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing you have is the, is the water or the brazen laver. Then you have the, the high priest being anointed at the door. That, at the door, that would be your spirit. That would be your spirit. So you have blood, water, spirit, or you have death, burial, and a resurrection. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you also have a principle of 40 mm -hmm. here in the holy place. Mm -hmm. Because from the door to this seven branch lampstand was 10 feet. From the seven branch lampstand to this, this uh, altar of incense is 10 feet. Then down to the shoe bread is 10 feet. And back to the door is another 10 feet. So you have 10, that's 10. Another 10, that's 20, 30. Then you have 40. So you have a principle of 40 as well in the pattern. And you have death, burial, resurrection, is it R-E-S-S -S or just one S? One S. One S? Okay. Well, that's why it's a school. <laughs> then you have principles death, burial, resurrection, ascension. Now you have these principles laid out in this pattern, and that's why we can go about to prove that we've talked about, you know, is this Bible true? How do we know that this Bible is true? Because we have principles laid out in this pattern that can prove the divine authenticity or that it's, it's actually from Yahweh, the unerring accuracy, or that the, the Bible, it doesn't err. Although there's mistakes in this Bible, and we admit that there's mistakes in every single Bible, but the vision corrects the version of the Bible. And that's what we were given, this divine vision corrects the version of the Bible. So you had the divine, the divine, uh, the unerring accuracy and the infallibility of the scriptures. Now we have these principles laid out. Can you get Isaiah um, uh, 28? Isaiah 28? Uh-huh. Does it matter? No. 
28 and 9. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. This also cometh forth from Yahweh of hosts. Isaiah 28. 28 mm -hmm. at 9. Sorry. Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand? Now, it's, he says, Isaiah says, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Okay. Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are weaned from the milk. And drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. Wouldn't that be a babe that's weaned from the milk? And, and when we come into this class, we're babes. That's why you, you can't expect to, to learn ever the whole purpose of Yahweh in two hours. Mm -hmm. That's why people have been coming here for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And they can attest and tell you, I'm still learning new things every single time I go down to that class. Because Yahweh, He's infinite. He's inf You'll never. And we'll be learning in a ages mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. right. this is not it just after, oh you die and that's it some people think that you die and then that's just it yeah. no that's not the case we'll be learning about Yahweh in ages to come without this physical body of limitations on mm -hmm. That's the beauty that we have coming, and we know exactly what we have coming. There's examples of it in the, in the universe to show what we have coming. Continue reading. For a precept must be upon precept. Now it says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now, I don't want to be vulgar or anything, but a woman has two breasts, mm -hmm. right? That's representing the law. And the prophets, mm -hmm. or the two witnesses. So a babe has to be weaned from the milk, go to one breast, and then the next breast. They're getting their milk, or they're getting that foundation. That's why we, Isaiah said, to the law and to the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, mm -hmm. to this word, Yahweh Elohim, right. there is no light in them. Right. That's how we prove these principles, to the law and to the prophets. Mm -hmm. right. Them, so them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast mm -hmm. for precept must be upon precept. Now precept is a principle. Yes. So precept must be upon precept. So we have a precept of blood here. Mm -hmm. We have a precept of blood here. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Uh. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. So we have a blood precept. Then we also have a water precept. Mm -hmm. And we also have a spear precept. Mm -hmm. So we have a blood precept. Precept upon precept. Another precept upon precept. Read line upon line line upon line so here on this chart we have this these these plates lined up so you have this blood line here blood 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 all the way down this is proven the Bible and that these aren't just random events that are happening Yahweh he's he structured everything by a pattern mm -hmm. so that we can understand even though Isaiah is writing thousands of years later than somebody like Moses they're saying they're looking at the same thing or they're looking at the same events by the pattern. So we have, the, the, even though there's, remember we said there's different manifestations or different events, but it's the same principle. So we have this principle of blood coming down, precept upon precept, line upon line. So we have a blood line. Then we have, next we have this water line that lining up with the same events. And then also we have a spirit line. Line up the events all the way down. Precept upon precept, line upon line, read. Here a little and there a little. Here, here where a little? Here to the law a little and here to the prophets a little. Here a little mm -hmm. and there a little. Uh huh. For with stammering lips and another tongue. Now for with stammering lips, you know what stammering lips, what I was just doing earlier mm -hmm. when I couldn't speak. Stammering lips, repeating mm -hmm. or repetition. Yeah. That's what Yahweh does. He says, I overturn and overturn and overturn. Mm -hmm. He repeats himself. Don't you like consistency in your life? Yes. You like when someone is consistent. Yes. Because of the consistency, you say, oh, I know that they're going to. If you show up on time every single time yes. for 40 years, you're going to be like, I know they're they they going to be on time that next class. Yes. But if you show up late, you be like, they're going to be late. I know they're going to be late. <laughs> you don't even have to guess about it. But you like that consistency because it proves itself. Yahweh, he had to be consistent so that we can catch on. If, if, if it just this Adamic uh, story wasn't enough, oh, you got to know a story. Story. Up, you got the children of Israel. Oh, you didn't catch on to that? I'll give you another one. Here's the pattern. Up, here's Yahshua fulfilling everything. So he has to repeat so that we can have faith. The repetition establishes our faith. Read. Yes. 
I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's line upon line, hearing little and there uh -huh. for, for with stammering lip uh -huh. and another tongue. And another tongue. Will he speak to this people? Now, this is another tongue. It, the church talks about speaking in tongues. This is the true speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't see a whole crowd of people down here. Because yeah. we're speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And it, the whole world, they just can't understand. So with stammering lips, see this blood, 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 blood. That's stammering lips. Water, 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 water. Stammering lips, spirit, 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 spirit. And another tongue shall he teach to yes. his people. Mm -hmm. That's how he's teaching us mm -hmm. with repetition. And, and, and Isaiah is just confirming what Moses already wrote because Moses, he was a stutterer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you, did you know, Moses was a stutterer. Mm -hmm. He wasn't of good speech. And Yahweh never picks, I'm going to pick the Harvard University grad <laughs> to teach my people. Mm -hmm. Well, if this, if this divine vision came from someone who studied at Harvard, people would be like, he was smart enough to figure the Bible out. That's right. mm -hmm. But he had to take someone who didn't go past the sixth grade of education, mm -hmm. didn't go past the sixth grade, mm -hmm. And he's teaching people down in this school medical doctors, PhDs. He's teaching lawyers, scientists about the Bible, the pattern. He's teaching medical doctor about childbirth. You would think they know all about childbirth. And he's sitting there teaching them childbirth by the pattern. How Yahweh teaches childbirth. Why? It, it's this one thing knowing, oh, the baby's born this way and, you know, the water breaks. Mm -hmm. But why does that happen? Right. You want to know the why behind everything because mm -hmm. there is a why behind everything. And so now we have these precepts upon precepts. So here with the identic transgression, you have Adam down here. You see, you have the death of Adam. That's a principle of blood. Usually when someone dies, you have that show forth of blood. Mm -hmm. So you have this blood down here. And you come on down to Noah. Now you have Noah. See, he had to warn the wicked. And he warned them. He said, can we get that scripture? It's uh, Ezekiel. The 33rd chapter. See, see how useful these charts are? I don't have to make nothing up. I don't want to hear, you know, you know, Yahweh... <laughs> He didn't show me some things. It, it, it better be on this chart. <laughs> it, it better be in the textbook on these charts or something. I don't want to hear what Miguel, what revelation Miguel got. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> mm. Um, Ezekiel 33 and 1. Uh -huh. And again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, mm -hmm. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. Look, the, the word of Yahweh came unto him. Mm -hmm. That's this visionary shape and form came unto him. Speaking, read. Speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, uh -huh. When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, mm -hmm. if when he he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Mm -hmm. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, mm -hmm. if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. His blood is right. upon his own head. Mm -hmm. So you have this principle of blood here. See, Noah, he received a vision, and Noah received a vision that it's going to rain. Now, the people didn't believe Noah. And they had, in order to get into this one ark, they had to believe that Noah had that vision. And we say that this is the only truth that you can find in the world. And in order to get in the ark of salvation or Yahshua the Messiah, you have to believe this one truth. And, we, and it doesn't just come just blindly. We have to provide you the evidence to, in order to believe that this one truth. And so they had to believe Noah, and he had to warn the people, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Now, if he didn't warn them, then the blood is on Noah's head because it was his responsibility to warn the people. But now if he warned them and they say, well, I don't believe Noah had that vision. You know, I, we building that. I don't, you see that fool building that ark for 120 years? He's a fool. And, 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 and one, another thing, it hadn't even rained on the face of the earth yet. That's right. That's right. right. A dew mist went up to water the ground. Mm -hmm. It hadn't rained on the. So he's teaching something that they never even seen or heard before. Mm -hmm. 
So they're like, they, they, the people that don't believe Noah, the blood is on their head. It's their responsibility now. So you have this blood here with Noah, and then you coming down here, you have the children of Israel. The children of Israel, they were told to do what to get out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. take to take out a lamb. Out a lamb. Mm -hmm. See, Yahweh's thoughts are not your thoughts. Right. You didn't, he didn't say take out a sword or anything like that. Mm -hmm. He said take out a lamb. Mm -hmm. So he told them to take out a lamb, and they had to kill the lamb. Mm -hmm. They had to pierce this lamb in the side. And see, they had to put the blood of the lamb, once they, once they killed the lamb, they had to put the blood on the lamb on the upper doorpost, yes. or on the lintel of the door, more correctly, the two side posts. Yes. And then they had the, they were dipping the, the blood from a basin of blood. Mm -hmm. And so Yahshua, since he's fulfilling, so that had four points of blood, plus that lamb was pierced. You have Yahshua, he's fulfilling, or he's, yeah, he's fulfilling. So he has this crown of thorns, just like the, the blood on the upper door or the, uh, the lintel of the door. He had the, the nails in his hands. That's like as the two side posts. And he says, I am the door. So they're putting blood on the door there. He was nailed to his hands. One, two, and also nailed to his feet. Mm -hmm. And then you walk around here say, I don't believe that. And you have nails on your hands and your feet. Mm -hmm. And you've been walking around all your life. And he was nailed to the cross by his hands and his feet. And then he was also pierced in the side here. Mm -hmm. Just like this lamb was pierced. Wasn't Adam pierced in the side in the garden? Yep. And Eve was taken out of Adam? Mm -hmm. So he's fulfilling all things. So you have that blood here. With the children of Israel. Then you have the blood in the tabernacle where all these principles are coming from. You have the blood here. And they had four horns on this altar. And after the high priest had killed that sacrifice, he'd had to take that blood. And he had to walk around and put the blood on these four horns. Just like you had the four points of blood here. You had the four points of blood with Yahshua here. Mm -hmm. Noah's death or his blood went unto all or the four corners of the world. Those four points of blood. And same with Noah. He had to preach to the four corners of the world. Blood on everyone's head. So you have blood with Adam. Blood with Noah. Blood with the children of Israel. You have blood in the, in the, the, the tabernacle. You have blood here with Yahshua the Messiah. So you have blood principles all the way down. All the way down. Blood here is death on the cross. So now you have water as well. So the water in this, this uh, Edenic transgression plate, you have the water, you have the sweat of his face, he shall eat bread. That's the water in that plate. So you have a principle of water coming on down. Then you have Noah, he had that vision that it was going to rain. You have that water. Then you have the children of Israel. I don't even have to guess what they should be coming to next after they take out that lamb. If you know the pattern, you should know that the next thing that they would have to come to is a body of water. Mm -hmm. So here the children of Israel, after they take that death of the lamb, see they start migrating to the wilderness of Sinai. See, so they have to go to the divided waters of this Red Sea. So the next vessel in this tabernacle pattern is water. Because you have the blood here, then you have the water here. Mm -hmm. And then they were led, these children of Israel, I won't even get to that. Then you have Yahshua here, you have him being baptized by John. Now, Yahshua, his baptism was to fulfill water baptism. That's a big difference than what we teach and what the church teaches. They teach that Yahshua, who they would call Jesus, came to institute or to set up mm -hmm. or start a Christian way of, of life. They say he instituted water baptism. They say he instituted the Lord's Supper. They say he's instituting all these things, but that's exact opposite of what he was actually doing. He was fulfilling or bringing to an end all those things, all these ways of worshiping, circumcision, baptisms, suppers, sacrifices, Ten Commandments, ceremonies. He was bringing an end to all those things because these were physical ways of worshiping Yahweh. That he set up with the children of Israel and the children of, this is a key, the children of Israel only. Gentiles, which is someone who's not a natural born Israelite, were never given the Ten Commandments. They were never at Mount Sinai hearing this law being spoken down. It was the Israelites and the Israelites only that were given this law. 
And that's why he said when he's going to make a new covenant, it'll be with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. We say he left out the Gentiles. No, he never left out the Gentiles. Because when he gave that promises, promise to Abraham, Abraham, he said, in, in your seed, I will bless all nations on the face of the earth. But he was, he was dealing with Israel for the time being. But he didn't leave out the Gentiles because it was to the Jew first, then the Gentile. And the Jews, after they received, or after the Israelites received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, then seven years later, the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he never left us out, but he never gave us these things to follow. And here they are in the church teaching that you have to get baptized. You have to keep the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. You have to do all these things. Take the Holy Communion. You don't have to do that anymore. It's by grace, which is an unmerited favor. You don't have to do any of these physical things. It's grace. Because if you say, oh, I got to get eat the Lord's Supper, now you're taking away His grace. So now you have this water here. So He's fulfilling water baptism or putting an end to water baptism. And you go down, all the way down, these principles just line up. Blood, water, spirit. And you see how you have the spirit here. You have the, the angel, Michael, driving Adam out of the garden. Now, he only drove Adam out of the garden. Mm -hmm. Eve just followed Adam out of the garden. Because Adam is the head, and now she was the body. I'll give you another example to prove that. All he did was kick Satan, or Lucifer, out of heaven. Mm -hmm. And those angels followed with him, that third. Mm -hmm. They followed him out of, out of, the, uh, out of heaven. So he, he drove Adam out of the garden because she was his body. He's representing the head, and she was his, his body. So he drove Adam out of the garden, and then Eve just followed him out of the garden. And so you have this spirit, or Michael, driving them out of the garden. So you have this first created son of Yahweh coming down, and he had to drive them out in the cool of the day. Why the cool of the day? This sun is coming down, because this, this physical sun out in the sky is only a reflection of the true sun, who is Yahshua the Messiah. That's why the scientists can't understand, when you read back in Genesis, on the third day, how is there vegetation when the sun, the physical sun, didn't come into the sky until the fourth day? The scientists, they can't understand that. The theologians, they can't explain it either. But we, we can explain these things down here. That's why you have to keep coming back. But this sun is only a reflection of the true sun, who is Yahshua. And so this sun, he has to come down with the sun as Adam is dying. That physical sun is coming down. And then you have Yahshua who fulfills it. As the blood is coming out of Yahshua's body, it's turning darkness over the face of the deep, or from the sixth to the ninth hour. So you have that darkness here. That sun is coming down. And then he re when he resurrects, he resurrects early in the morning because the suns have to come up together. So you have this spirit line here. Then you have this angel that shut the door to this ark. Then you have you had this the cloud. They were led by the cloud, and the angel that was in the cloud leading them out of the wilderness, of, uh, leading them out of Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai. Then you had this high priest. He had to be anointed with this holy anointed oil before he officiated in this tabernacle, representing that spirit. And then when when Yahshua was baptized, so he had that he had the Holy Spirit descend upon him like a dove. It wasn't a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. It's just types and shadows. The Spirit descended upon Yahshua. Then you have that Spirit. So he's showing these principles all throughout these events that are happening in the Bible. And then also, he has shown his death, burial, and resurrection. Because we read over in Acts that he's given to proof unto every man that he has raised who from the dead? Yahshua the Messiah from the dead. So then that's, that's why we know what's coming up. That's how we know what, what's going to happen. Because we all have to go through that death. Burial and resurrection. When you plant a seed in the ground, Lisa was talking about it. It doesn't resurrect as a big giant seed. You plant that seed and it's buried in the ground and then it resurrects as a, a beautiful, more precious than what it what went down as. Just like our physical bodies, this is not the reality of things. After we died and we're buried, we're looking for something 
That's the hope of immortal glorification. Something way better than what this is. Mm -hmm. And there's so many principles of a death, burial, and resurrection. And there's power in that resurrection. And then also with that spirit coming all the way down, you have a 40 principle. All the way down. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. The children of Israel, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Yahshua, after he was baptized, he went into the wilderness of Judea for 40 days. So you have all these 40s in the Bible. Jonah, when he, after... After Jonah, he was thrown overboard because he was supposed to go preach unto Nineveh. So since, Noah didn't, then, since Jonah didn't want to preach, the blood was on his head. Then he's thrown overboard. And that fish, not a giant whale, that fish swallows him up. That fish swallows up Jonah. He's buried in, that, he's buried in the water in that fish. And then he cried unto Yahweh from his soul. And, the, and the, that fish spit him up on, on dry ground. Mm -hmm. And he had that seaweed, Jonah had that seaweed wrapped around his head, just like Yahshua had that crown of thorns wrapped around his head. And on the third day, he, Jonah was spit up unto the, 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 the shore. And so then, after the third day, he went to preach. Guess how many days he preached unto Nineveh? Mm -hmm. 40. 40 days. Mm -hmm. Why 40? Because we're going by a pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's what separates us from the world, mm -hmm. is that we teach by this divine pattern that was given unto Moses on top of Mount Sinai. And if we all just stick to that pattern, we can all see eye to eye. This would, this would cause peace in the world if, if everyone understood the things that we were teaching. Because we, would we wouldn't have, there wouldn't be no divisions. Because we're all looking at the same thing. Hope you got something out of that and give all praise unto Yahshua the Messiah. That concludes our Sunday class. We want to thank everyone for coming out to study with us on this Sunday. We hold classes here every Sunday from 11 to 1. We have our Wednesday Zoom from 7 to 9, and you can contact me if you um, need the link to log into that. And we have our Friday class at this location from 7.30 to 9.30. Let's all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. hallelujah.